Praise God. Praise God. Oh, we mighty. We small in number, but we mighty, man. You might as well get your praise on now. Don't even, hey. You might as well get your praise on now. We don't need fireworks tomorrow. Might as well get your praise in now. Some of y'all done come through a whole lot. We halfway through this thing. We halfway through 2019. Come on and get your praise in now. Let the devil know what he's dealing with. Come on and get your praise in. You walked in just in time to be encouraged and be lifted up. Stephen, you came home just in time, bro. You came home just in time. Michelle, you showed up just in time. You showed up just in time, Tuana. God's got something for you. On the eve of a holiday, God has got something for us. We are small in number but mighty. Come on and praise God. Praise God. We ain't holding nothing back. We got fireworks up in here. We got fireworks up in here. We got fireworks up in here. God has been good. He has been good. He's been good. He's been too good on a rainy day. He's been too good to wait till tomorrow to celebrate a holiday. He's been too good to wait till tomorrow to celebrate independence. Some of y'all been independent. You've been free from the spirit that had you bound up. You've been free in your mind. You've been free in your worship. You've been free in your body. You've been free in your finances. You have been free. Some of y'all see everybody else is catching up to us tomorrow. We're independent right now. We are free from that bondage, from that mindset that had us bowed down. Even if you carried it into this month, you can drop it off right now. You can drop it off right now. Whatever bugs you today, whatever bugs you today, don't even really matter. You made it down this aisle. That's all you need to praise God. That's all you need. That's all you need. You made it here tonight. Everything else that happened today, Andy, it don't matter. I don't care what the mind fight was. It don't matter. You made it into the victory house to praise God. Come on, man. Give God some praise. Man. I feel good. I needed that. <laughs> I needed that. Man, God has been a good God. God has been good to us, man. God will meet you. God will meet you. All you got to do is cry out. God will meet you. You cry out. You open your mouth. You get to praising God. He will show up right where you're at, right in the seat that you're in. All you got to do is be earnest and honest and open and talk to God for yourself. Praise Him from the bottom of your soul, from the depth of your soul. And God will open up some doors for you right now. Right now. Somebody came in bogged down, boy. Somebody let that, it's like cloudy weather. Don't let that cloudy weather get you cloudy in your spirit. Unbog yourself right now. Start praising God. Unbog yourself right now. Unbog yourself. That ain't you. That ain't you. No, 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 no. Not the worshiper you are. That is not you. That ain't you. You ain't no bogged down person. You can't walk in here like that. See, God knows who he is. He knows who's his. God will look at you like, oh, that ain't my child. My child. See, God is such a good God. God hearkens unto our voice when we ain't thinking right, when we ain't acting right. God will look at you and say, hold on, that, that ain't my child's voice. That ain't my child. That ain't how much. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All I need them to do is just whisper a word. I just need them to get a word up to me so I can dispatch some angels to that situation. That's not them to be down and fall down. I, I just need them to snap out of it. I just need them to remember remember what I've done for them. I just need them to remember who I am in their life. That's all. I just need them to remember. I just, I, I, got, I, I got to get that off of them. I got I to gotta snap out of it. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Got to talk to you like that. At least he does me. At least he does me. We thank God. Let's cup our hands. Let's go before God. You know, sometimes you just gotta get stuff off you. You know, <laughs> I know what it's like, man. Trust me, I, I know how. I know what it's like. I, I know what that. I know what that is to come in bogged down. <laughs> come in bogged down. You already got 16 pounds of weight on you before you even hear a word. I know what that is. Sometimes you gotta you gotta box that up off you, man, before you even sit down. Before you even sit down, that's the blessing. That's the addi the additional blessing of getting to the house of God on time, so you can get all that stuff shaken off. You don't want to sit down. In that all that mire and muck and all that stuff that's way you don't want to sit down with that stuff. It's already heavy. You gonna sit down? 
Anybody here ever been in a weight room? You, you know how you squat and you got weights on your shoulders, Michelle? You mean to tell me you're going to sit in a sitting position with all that weight, all that worry, and all that doubt, all that, that strange God, you're going to have that sitting on your shoulder when you sit down? Man, you want to get rid of that stuff, lighten your load before you sit down and eat. I feel better now. Okay. All right. Cut your hand. Oh, you already did. I'm sorry. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I am the head. I am, the, I am not the tail. I am above only. I am not beneath. I am abundance. I am increase. I am prosperity. I am favor. I am supernatural favor. I am singing. I am dancing. I am a blessing to the kingdom. I am a blessing to the nation. And I am a blessing to the world. I am health. I am wealth. My God shall supply all my needs. I'm sorry, I'm going to make it personal. All my needs according to his riches in glory. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Put your hands together. Thank God. I'm always sweating. I can be seated. I'm always sweating. It's all good. Uh, Todd, good call opening the door, man. Good Lord. I'd be up here looking like I was dying. Hello. <laughs> um, so for those of y'all, the bishop is in town, but the man of God is relaxing as well he should. Um, spending some time with his wife, I'm sure. Oh, it's okay. We still spending time with his wife. He was in the office. We forget it. So he's, he's in town. <laughs> he's spending time. Uh, relaxing, going to enjoy going to his holiday. So those of y'all that were expecting to see him tonight, sorry, right, we'll see you Sunday morning. <laughs> He'll be here Sunday. So um, don't worry, I wasn't planning on being up here. I didn't know I was going to be up here. I got one of those 5 p.m. texts. Hey, uh, <laughs> yes, sir, brother. Uh, <laughs> no, um, so I didn't know I was going to be up here, but I thank God. Um, I thank God for the word Pastor Linda's been bringing these last yeah. few I don't know about y'all, man. I'm still eating on that. <laughs> you ever had a big meal? You be chewing on leftovers for the next few days? I, I, I'm not even really over what she taught Sunday. <laughs> Much less finish dealing with and going over, you know, practicing in my mind what she was teaching yesterday. Because, and that, that's the truth, man. We, we have so many conversations with ourselves. And so I'm just hoping, I'm trusting we ain't going to be long. Because y'all know I ain't the long one. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm as quick as a, 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 I don't know, I'm quick. But my point being, uh, I'm just gonna re rehash a couple of things that she uh, that she went over, you know, in my own way, I guess. And we will be out of here. But the blessing is, uh, if you turn to uh, Psalms 81, the bl man, <laughs> hearing and hearkening, <laughs> yeah. hearing and hearkening, man, our hearing, our hearing. You know, it's it's, it's not just what you hear; it's how you hear. Yeah. It's not, it's not even what you hear, it's how you hear. It's how you hear, because uh, <laughs> one message could come out in six different, 16 different interpretations of that one thing was said based on what's going on in that person's life, based on how you're feeling, based on your emotions, based on the strange God that you already got sitting up in you. So you may not even receive something right, correctly, and we know we come here three times, yeah, three times a week, Four hours total, I guess. What? Well, two hours tonight. No, it ain't gonna be no two hours tonight. But typically, two hours tonight, two hours Tuesday, the four hours that we spend in here on Sunday, and then <clears throat> after that, you know, you're on your own. But based on whatever's going on in your life, the strange God that you might, that we possibly bring in here, the man of God to be dealing with something. The man of God to be give, bringing us a word. You know, man, He feeds us. We gotta thank God for our man of God. We have an exceptional, our bishop. 
And you know, he actually told me to deal with that. Now, I'm, I'm going to get specific. I'm, I'm just going to take a segment, a, a segment. I'm not going to go through everything Pastor Linda uh, went over, because that's a lot. <laughs> but I'm going to just deal with what he told me to deal with of it. And, you know, he gives us such specific word. We have to thank God for a man of God. We, first of all, we got to thank God that we have a God of specificity. Because with all these different personalities in here, all these different walks of life, all these different uh, mindsets and everything, God feeds our man of God's mind and, 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 and our woman of God's mind. Pastor Linda, Pastor KT, whoever's, Mother Mozella, whoever's bringing the word, he feeds their mind. And God is able to divvy that thing up specifically for your needs or for what you're going through. It's a, it's a, it's a singular principle but it can be specified for different people based on what you're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing thing. Amen. The man of God asked me to use an example, and y'all know me and my sports analogies and my football analogies. And if you don't know me, you're going to just, I, I just use football a lot. Uh, you ever watch the football game? And, you know, to the naked eye, remember, whether you got an HDTV, Chris will appreciate this, whether you got an HDTV or two TV, whatever you're watching, you're sitting at home, you're watching the game, Tom Brady and the Patriots, who I can't stand, playing my beloved Cowboys, America's team. And, uh... I can see that y'all y'all strange guys. No, no, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. But uh, you know, Tom Brady playing, you know, Patriots playing a Cowboys, whoever. And you know, you're sitting there watching now from your point of view, from what you see. Because remember, you gotta, you're you're sitting at home, so you can see the whole story. But you know, those linemen. You know, Tom Brady comes up to to, to run his offense, mom. He lines up behind the center. And a lot of times, he don't even get under center anymore. That's because he's older. You know, sh shotgun is, it helps older people. So, you know, he don't even line up all the way under center now. Not that he can't, he just don't have to. And from being in a shotgun, stepping back, he can see all of the field and everything a lot easier. Just, you know, being in a shotgun. So before, before he even calls the play, he's looking around and he's calling out a bunch of stuff that to the naked eye, to the naked person sitting there in the crowd, it don't make no sense. <laughs> it don't make no sense. sounds like rhetoric to you. To the naked eye, to the naked person not listening, it sounds like rhetoric. Oh, he's just trying to throw somebody off. But every one of those things that he just said, for those linemen up front, for the guys that's on the line of scrimmage, for those receivers that's on the line of scrimmage, for the running back in the backfield, for the tight end that's right there, everything he just said means something. And it's, div it's divvy out specifically to each person. Jet White Brown, flanker jet, 18, motion. That's an actual NFL play, by the way. I'm not just making that up. I'm not just, I know it sounds like I'm just running off stuff. That's an actual play. Jet White Brown, 18, jet motion. That's a real play. Each one of those things tells somebody. The jet tells the lineman what to do. Okay, when, you, when, when he comes forward, you're going into a pass block. So you have to look for the three technique. I'm going somewhere with this. So I know this sounds boring to y'all that don't care about football like that. Just hang on for a second. You gotta be, it's going to be a three technique. Watch the A gap. Watch the three gap. 18, 18, that tells the tight end that he has to release. So the minute the defensive end comes here, he has to release and look for the ball right away. What else did I say? Jet, 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 brown, Brown, that tells the running back what he's doing. So he's either going to run a flare out to the out here or he's going to pass protect based on what that, that defensive end that just went in here does. So my point is, without going through every single thing, then the 18, that's the route that the receiver out there, the one, the, he runs the one, which you know, slant. Then he runs the eight, the eight's the what? Post. Everybody has specific things. What am I trying to say? The man of God will come up here and he'll be teaching, he'll be bringing a word. He'll be teaching hard, bringing a word. He'll stop and specifically say something to Glenda. Then he'll jump off of that and stop. He'll specifically say something to Simona. He'll stop. He'll say something specific to Mozella. He'll stop. He'll say something specific to Tisha. He'll yeah. turn around and say something yeah. to Mom. Wow. He'll say something back there to me. Yeah. He'll say something to Pastor KT. Now to the average ear, to the average ear, it don't sound like, it sounds like a bunch of rhetoric. Yeah. It sounds like some rhetoric. And if you're the defense, if you're the defense, if you're the enemy, if you're the spirits that are fighting you, because remember, spirits are not omnipotent. They are not omnipresent. So the spirits don't know what, when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, they don't understand what you're saying. So your spirit, spirits are not, they don't have the same power that God has. They can't be everywhere. They can't be everything. Right. They don't have all power. Yeah. So to them, it sounds like rhetoric. Yes. But to what God is telling you, it's simple, specific instruction. Yes. Tim, block down. Right. Chris, 
do this. Yes. Marcus, do that. Yes. You do this. You do that. I'm standing back here so I can see everything. I can see your whole life. I can see the plan of God in your life. I can see what your destiny is. I can see where he's trying to take you. I ain't got time. It burns the clock and it burns time out. It burns precious seconds. It burns precious time on your life for me to have to call a time out, stop, and explain to you what we've already went over in practice all week long. Right. So by the time we get to the game, I'm just shouting out audibles. 52's the mic. 52's the mic. Hey, please handle your money. You're going to lose your family. Come on, man. 52's the mic. That, that motion, 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 motion. It sounds hard. It sounds quick. It sounds loud. And it comes with expediency. We ain't got time to talk. Why? Because that devil, that spirit that's about to blitz you is sitting right, right here. Right there. Lined up right here ready to blitz you. And you don't see that. Come on, man. You don't see that because you're down like this. Yeah. So you have a limited view. You don't see the big picture. You just have, see, you're so far in your emotions. You're so far caught up in what you went through, what was said to you, how it was said, what's done. You're missing the big picture. You can't see everything. You just have a limited view. Oh, I know I can play football. Oh, I know I am a good saint. You have a limited view. I'm not saying you have no view. You just have a limited view. You can't see everything. You have a limited view. But this man of God is standing back here. God put him in this position where he's standing back here in a shotgun. He sees everything. Do you understand? When the word of God talks about how can he preach except he being sent, do you understand Bishop Barlow was sent here? He was sent to tell you the stuff that he don't want to tell you. Do you understand he was sent to tell you stuff? And again, we know what it is. We know it's path protection. Because every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Sunday, we get practice. 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 Well, we get to learn the plays. We get to learn the scriptures. We get to learn the word. How, what is that? What, 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 what are you talking about? Learn the scriptures, learn the plays. Sunday school. Word. You know, and if you're in Pastor Linda's class, so I've been told, she's going over principle. She's drilling people. It's, it's, it's just like football practice, ain't it? And if you don't get it, what happens? You got to run it again. Am I right? right. And we're going to keep running it again. Right. You didn't turn in your assignment? The assignment's due again next week. Am I right? Um, Michelle does the same thing with the teenagers. You didn't do the assignment? Yeah. Well, it's due next week. You know, if you still didn't do it, oh, it's due next week. Why, why are you not doing it? Now we got to deal with what, what, <laughs> what's your feet alignment? How are your feet aligned? See, now we got to understand why are you not hearing me? Why are you not hearing the instruction? How come you can't run this play? It's a simple play. It's a simple instruction. How come you can't hearken into it? It's got to be the way you're aligned. It's got to be the way you're faced. You can't, you're not facing and hearing correctly. You're not facing and hearing correctly. See, when you, you know, as a, man, as a wide receiver, you know, you got to be aligned properly. You know, there's so many feet. There's usually four feet between the end of the line of scrimmage and where the receiver lines up. You got to be aligned properly so you can receive the ball when it's coming to you. But if you're not aligned correctly, now we got to spend time in practice in Sunday school, in Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, getting you aligned correctly. Stand up for a second, Tina. So if you're too close, I got to push you out a little bit. No, you're too close because, see, I see when that thing blitzes, if you're too close and it blitzes, if you're too close and it blitzes, you run right into it. You run right into what the enemy wants. You run right into the enemy. If you're not aligned correctly, you run right into what Satan has for you. If you're not being obedient to simple instructions, simple details, and the man of God, the word of God, gives us simple, simple instruction, simple things. It's so simple that we don't do it. It's so simple sometimes that we don't do it. It's so simple we don't do it. How many of y'all... God, I know I was going to start sweating. How many of y'all actually spend time... Now, I, I, know, some, I know some people. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand. But how many of actually start spending time opening their mouth every day, declaring and speaking and asking God for what they want? Good. 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 If you meet the condition, right? If you meet the condition. And what is the condition? Is anybody? What's the condition? Hearken. You have a good attitude. You, obedience. The only way we know 
you did it is through your obedience. Right. So you have the heart. So, so you have to meet the requirement. But our problem is we constantly don't meet the requirement. We constantly leave stuff out. We think that we're so gifted in what we have. And in our flesh, we're so we were so used to our strange gods that when simple instruction comes, we might do it for a day. For example, Pastor Linda brought that word so hard on Sunday. I know, I, man, I went home. I was like, I, I, you know, man, I was talking to God all all Sunday night, Sunday morning, you know, Monday morning, Monday night, yesterday. Am I going to do it tomorrow though? Am I going to do it tomorrow? Am I going to do it Friday? See, I'm not here. We ain't here. I'm not here. With her. So now it's, a, it's about the, and it's still simple. It's not like we're being asked to leave the country or do something or great. It's simple. Hearken unto my word. Talk to God. You're supposed to be open. Get, get us Psalm 81 real quick. Man. Mom started first. Start. First, first, first. Yeah. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto God of Jacob. Stop right there for a second. Hold on. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Make a joyful noise. Let's start there for a second. See, time out for that strained, hard praise when you come into the house of God. Time out for that strained, hard praise when you're at home. What do I mean by strained, hard praise? In other words, you're praising God, but you really don't believe it. Your hands are moving, but you... How many, okay. Come on. Good. Good. Okay. We'll just, yeah. we'll just, we'll just work with me. Yeah. I have sat here at times thinking that I have been shut down spiritually from what God has for me, physically from what God has for me, and I've clapped my hands in the middle of service. Uh -huh. and said, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God. But in my mind, I feel as disconnected as an out of, out of socket. Come on, man. That's good. Okay? That's real. Okay? That's real. And so then what happens is when you're in that mode, when your mind is shut down like that, and somebody is, is just, you know, beseeching you to praise God, whether it's the man of God, whether it's my wife, her, praise and worship, come on, praise God, you know, come on, let's, let's, let's. Now in your mind, you're like, come on, it don't take all of that. Come on, man. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm with it. Let's let's just come on. Come on with it. Let's just let's. You ain't saying that, but in your spirit, you're like, let's, let's just get to the word. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm hungry. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's strange. That's strange. That's hard. That ain't joyful. No. That ain't joyful. I'm going to tell you right now. Your God, he don't receive that. Right. That's why we took time. If you got here on time this evening, we took time at the beginning of service so you could get all that stuff off you right. so you could truly make a joyful noise. So you can open yourself back up so God can hear your request. God can hear your, 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 your whatever you're, what it is you're asking. But you don't want to be in here all bogged up. You don't want to, man, and, that, and that's, that's the... That's sometimes, and I know we can't help it because we all got jobs, we all got different schedules, but that's the danger sometimes. And again, that's simple stuff. How long is the man of God, how long have they been talking about being here on time at 7 o'clock? Whether it's 7 a.m. on Sunday or 7 p.m. How long have we been talking about that? Now again, if you're working, if you got something going on, okay, cool. But to just be late, to just be late, and that's, remember, that's so simple. That's so simple. Be here on time at 7. Sounds so simple. And I'm talking to me too, so at least you know if you if you if you if you ruffling up right now, I'll ruffle yourself. I'm talking to me too. Be here at seven. That sounds so simple. That sounds like such a simple thing to do. It's so simple we don't do it. It's so simple we don't do it, and we take for granted what it means. Even though the man of God constantly teaches and says, "Man, you want God to be in a hurry to bless you." So if God is, if you want God to be in a hurry to bless you, you want to be in a hurry coming into the house of God. See, it's a, it's our thinking, it's our mindset, it's our thinking. We have to shift how we think because somehow, some way, we've gotten so bogged down because we're not utilizing our practice time really worshiping God, and we're not utilizing our time really getting in our Word. Somehow, somehow, we've got it in our head. That it's a burden to come in here at 7 o'clock. Somehow, some way, it's, 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 it's a burden. You know how you know it's a burden? Because the minute the, minute the man of God says, hey, be here on time, your flesh, yeah. your flesh's first inclination is, but I was, he, he don't know, he, but I, 
I mean, I left the house at 655. I mean, that's good for where I was. That's being here on time sounds so simple. <laughs> sounds so simple. That the best case, it sounds so simple that we don't do it. Or we take it for granted. We take for granted what, and it goes back to what Pastor Linda taught yesterday. We take for granted what that means to God. So now we're doing it as a, now we're using it as a strange God. Now we're not utilizing it. We're not getting the benefit of coming here with the right attitude, making a joyful noise, being here at 7 o'clock. Why? Because I owe that to God. I'm just glad that God saved me. Have we forgot, have you forgot where God brought you from? Come on now. Have you forgot where God brought you from? Have you forgot how depressed you really used to be? I mean, let's talk about it for a minute. Let's talk about it for a minute. Because since we got short memories, have you forgot how depressed you, have you, have you forgot telling people or telling yourself, I just ought to kill myself? Have you forgot telling yourself, I ain't no effing good? Have you forgot telling yourself, I'm this, I'm that, I'm ugly, man, I don't have a life. Have you forgot saying those type of things to yourself? Have you forgot having those type of mind fights? Have you forgot being depressed over the things that were said to you in childhood? Have you forgot what your parents used to say to you that you carried all the way to your adult life? Have you forgotten those things? Did God not deliver? Yes. Did God not deliver? No. Are you not sitting here now with a new, renewed sense of who you are? Has the renewing of your mind yes. not giving you an elevated thought where you can see yourself as God has made you? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you're no longer waking up looking at every day like it's a rainy day. You know what I mean when I say it was a rainy day? You know that day like, oh, today looks like, and then you look up, you're like, oh my God, it's the middle of the month. All I've been doing is just complaining all month. Oh my God, oh my God, what happened to the, I don't even, I, I don't even remember what I did on the 4th. I don't remember what I did on the 4th of this month. It's the 26th of this month. Oh my God. And that's deliverance that God has changed our mindset where you wake up optimistic. Where you wake up, God, I thank you. You wake up praising God. Where God, I thank you. God, I thank you. I, I, I know me. Let's just talk about Marcus D. Crawford. I know me. When, man, when I, man, there is such a difference in my mindset and in my life when I wake up trying to just get on the hustle and on the good foot. And when I wake up and I praise God and I'm able to settle myself down and actually see what's going on for the day. Actually get a word from God. Actually get some instruction actually get God to tell me to calm down this is going to come up but don't worry about it this might happen but don't worry about it this is going to come, this is how you need to deal with it this might be a test of you because you need patience so this person might try you today but you're ready for it I've instilled enough in you You can see. I negate all of that when I just wake up in a hustle and bustle I, I got to get Jackson up so he's ready and all right, all right, baby, so I get in the shower so I mean, I looked up and 17 days on went by me doing that. And then little stuff that really don't matter starts getting on your nerves. Little stuff that really don't matter. Why do they always come to church like that? Oh, oh my God, why do they why do they park their car right there? Oh my God, why do they little stuff that don't matter? It may not be bad, but it's something little. Pretty soon you've got 25 little things that don't matter added up in a bag. So then when a word says, hey, you need to be here on time, you strain it's a strange God, you, you can't even hear that. Right. You fall down. You fall down. Come on, let's praise him. <laughs> Oh, now we can't pray. Oh, oh, we, we still pray. Come on, come on. You know God's good. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. Hold him how good he is. Come on. Uh, I just. <laughs> Pastor Casey has to yell into the mic when he prays. 
I'm just, you know, if it ain't you, don't worry about it. Don't, 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 if you've never had that, don't worry about it. Maybe it's just been me. But my point is, that becomes strange. And now I'm missing out on the blessing. I've missed out on the opportunity to make a joyful noise. So that's the first thing. Before you do anything else, that's why when you come in here, it's such a benefit being here on time. And when even if you got to come in late because you come from work or picking your kids up, whatever, make sure, man, when you hit, I cannot stress enough the importance of coming in here with an attitude like, oh, man, I just thank God I made it. I just, I just thank God I made it. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how you felt like you messed up. I don't care what mistake you had. Oh, man, I'm just glad. I don't ever want to take the emphasis off God. I don't ever want to make myself a strange God thinking that it's about me being here. I've even had to check myself. I don't ever want it to be, okay, I think I take pride in being here on time, but I want to take pride in being on time for the right reasons. Not because I'm better than this saint or that saint, but because I remember what God's done for me, and I want to be in alignment. I want a clear path. I want to know that I need God and me being here on time is not me saying that I'm better than this saint or that saint. It's me saying this is what I need. This is what I want to put myself in a position where God can hear me. And if the first thing out of the word is make a joyful noise, I can't make a joyful noise coming in here murmuring and complaining. Amen. I can't sit down murmuring and complaining. If I'm sitting down murmuring and complaining, I'm already happy. And, and, and the person that's teaching, they can feel that. Yes. The man of God can feel that. Pastor Linda can feel that. Right. Pastor KT can feel that. Mother Mozilla can feel that. Yes. You feel it. You can feel it. And then you got to cut through that, fight through your own mind of, oh my God, Lord, Lord, you, gotta, you pick me. What time is the bishop getting here? Like, you got to fight through all of that stuff. It's, it's a burden. Next thing you know, you wasted half of your, you wasted half of your deliverance time. Whew. See, we take for granted that God will move at a moment's notice. But we have sat here in this church. We have sat in service and watched God deliver people at a moment's notice. He just did it for Dre. Amen. He just did it for Drake. We want people. He did it for my niece. My niece sat here and said, you know what, God? She opened her mouth. God filled her on a Wednesday night. So Wednesday nights are always going to be special to my niece. My, and nobody else is here. Because remember, if I recall correctly, brother, nobody else shouting when my niece said, you know what, God? I need you. Nobody else was shouting. So you don't need nobody else to pump you up. You don't need nobody to get with you to remind you of how good God's been. That was individual for her. A Wednesday night will always mean something because God met her here on a Wednesday night. And she wasn't even sitting on the front row. She was sitting back here or back in this area. And God met her. What am I saying? It doesn't matter where you sit at in the sanctuary. Whether you sit up front, if you sit up back, if you sit up there, if you sit wherever you at in the sanctuary. If you meet the requirement, if you come in with the right attitude, if you open yourself up to make a joyful noise, God will hear you. You don't want to limit yourself having a bad attitude. I want to get off of this and move on, but I can't. You don't want to limit yourself having a bad attitude. You don't want to limit yourself just coming in thinking you're doing service a favor. You want to come in knowing at the forefront of your mind what you need from God. Knowing at the forefront of your mind what you said to God. Knowing at the forefront of your mind what you asked of God. The minute you walk in the door, that has to be forefront. When that is forefront, it's not hard to make a joyful noise. When that is forefront, it's not hard to praise and worship. You're not even thinking about nobody else. Yeah. The only time other people come into the mindset when it's when you're making a joyful noise is, ooh, I can feel the power. We all on one accord. Yeah. yeah but have we felt that? Have you been praising God and we get on one accord? Like, ooh, ooh, we don't put this thing to another level. Oh, God is about to do something. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That's an excellent feeling. That's an excellent feeling. That is an excellent man. Watching a baby saint be born. Watching somebody be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God, may I never be in a situation where I'm detached from that. I don't ever want to be detached from that. I want to see God birthing a baby. I want to see somebody be filled with the Holy Ghost and just be, oh, I want joy just overtaking me. I don't ever want to be a detached where I'm just watching. Because that means that sexual God. That means that selfish, strange God on me who thinks that only my situation matters. Who thinks that only my situation
situation matter? Because I spent last night crying. Well, you know what? Ariel didn't. Her husband's home. So it's her time to be thankful. I should be happy that her husband made it home. Everybody ain't got to be down in your situation just because you're down in your situation. See, that's where we get it confused. That's a strange God. That's a strange God where you think everybody has to be in the same situation and the same mindset that you are because you're going through. Who do you think you are? You're the only saint in here? You're the only one that had to go through a hard birthing process? You're the only one that had to deal with something? You're the only one that had their heart broke and had to get back up? You're the only one that God had to openly delay to get some things off of you? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Where it's all about you. No, sir. I'm talking to all of us. <laughs> yeah. we all got, where you think it's all about you. Where the service has to stop on your, it has to stop and move on your axis. Where it's not church unless you hear here. Oh my. <laughs> it's not church unless you worship it until you get it fired up and lathered up. Ain't nobody worshiping like you worshiping. We laugh, but you know what? There's a little bit of that. If you don't clip it, if you don't come in here and make a joyful noise and understand that that can clip you, but see, the man of God has the advantage, again, of standing back here and seeing all that. Yeah. Yeah. See, he knows all the personnel on the field. Yeah. He knows the weaknesses. He knows what the enemy likes to throw at you. He knows if you're a man, you like big butts. He knows if you're a woman, you like attention. He knows that if you see something shining, you just got to buy a damn a budget. <laughs> It shines, it blings, I got to have it, damn the budget. Yes, I said damn. It is biblical, don't be out there lying. They be cussing at Grace Apostolic, I can't go back there. Knowing you're going to call two people or a black mother effort just driving to church. <laughs> Somebody cut you off on AIMS, you like, oh, they're sorry, mother... Well, whatever. You ain't that sad. You ain't, you ain't that sad. Somebody cuts you off and you get whatever. Nobody else in here has road rage. Oh, y'all just, man, I need to. Here, come get the mic then. You that good. That's, that's a, come on, Mary. I know you saved Mary. Damn <laughs> You don't appreciate that until a word come up in your mind that you ain't. You ever got so mad that stuff that you ain't said in a real long time pops up in your head like, 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 okay, I know some of y'all still cuss to some degree. But you ever, like, like for those of us that have tried to do better, and, and, and you ever have something pop back up that you was like, somebody could say something in your head, like your mind has like went into adjectives and syllables that you didn't. See, that alone should let you know I need God. I need I'm, 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 you know, I am really, I know we joke about that, but I really am thankful God hasn't come while I've been driving, because I, I, I mean, I, I really need to, I need to, hey mom, keep reading, I'm sorry, keep reading. Yeah. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Pleasant, keep pleasant, keep going. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our Blow up. Don't just make a joyful noise. Blow that thing up. Yeah. Blow that thing up. Be as loud and as boisterous in your spirit as you You know how funky you get when you're mad? Be the reverse of that in joy. Yeah, right. <laughs> that makes sense to somebody because you know you think nothing. Not the anger that you show people that you like. I'm talking about the anger that only the people that are closest to you know. You know how mad and funky you get when you like for real PO? Knowing that you have that, should, that's part of the reason that you want to come with that boisterous, loud praise. Because you know on the backside, if I don't praise God, if I put too many days together of me just haphazardly, kind of just, you know, you know there, there has to be a time where you come in here and worship God where you just black out. You just black out. 
You gotta go for it, Chris. You gotta go for it. Well, you just black out. You forget who's up in here. You ain't trying to be seen. You just black out. Because I want to have so much praise stored up. I want to have such a discipline. It's just like working out. I want to be so familiar with working out and moving my body in weights that if I get injured or if I have something hit my body where I can't do it the way I used to, I still have a residue of fitness that I can rely on. I want a residue of praise and worship that I can rely on when I've been hit like my mother-in-law's been hit. I want a residue of praise that I can rely on when things go adverse to me. So I don't go into that funkiness. I don't go into that attitude. That's a strange God, and I don't want it holding me back. It's held me back for too long. It comes to a point where you start taking an ad, when you start adding up how many days. Man, you, I've lost too many days being average in my praise. I've lost too many days being average in the way that I worship God. I'm talking about average. I'm only doing just enough. Just enough. Just enough and just enough to make myself feel good. Just enough to make it seem like the next person that I'm on cloud nine. But no, I, but I gotta go beyond that. I have to literally yeah. black out when I'm praising God. Yeah. I gotta know what it is that I'm fighting against or what's fighting me. Right. Because my low can get real low. Yeah. Real low. Not that low where I'm like, well, I'm going through, but you know, pray my strength to the Lord. I'll, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be. Uh, that's just what you tell us. Your low lows. Your low lows hit the depth, and things that you have not, you would be surprised at how the enemy brings things to your mind. Yes. Sometimes it ain't even the enemy, it's just your flesh. You'd be surprised what crosses your mind when you're low low. That's why you don't hold back praise when you get in here. Yes. That's why you don't hold back praise. Amen. Because your praise will only allow you to go so low. Right. And then you're like, oh no, oh no, I'm not going to get on no roll. You, I'm not going to get on no roll. I'm not about to sit here and get on a roll and tell God all that he ain't. Yes. Oh, you may not have said it, but, but I'm not going to sit here. Oh, no, 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 no. God's been better to me than that. You know what, God? Forgive my attitude. I don't even want to go that far. I don't even want to take it to that level. No, 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 no. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to do nothing else. I'm good. I don't need my body messed up. I don't need my son hurt. I don't need my wife hurt. I don't need anybody I love hurt. I'm just, no, 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 no. I'm not that delusional. I know what you've done. I know how good you've been to me. I know what I had when Crystal was here. You ain't going to get me to start cursing God and dying. Ain't no situation, ain't no devil in hell going to make me curse God and die. Ain't no situation going to make me turn around and say, God ain't been good. You can lose something. You can lose something. You can lose a job. You can lose a, a position, you can lose a house, you can lose whatever, but even in your loss, and you know what, it could be your fault, but even in that, there has to be a review period, and then you get up, and then you get up. God ain't called nobody to beat on themselves after you made a mistake. You ain't got that, that there's a, show me where that's at in the scripture, where you get to beat on yourself. The word comes, Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word is quick and sharper than a two-edged sword, but after you've done that and after you repent, you get up. And now you start functioning in what God has for you. You've got no right to lay down and say, well, this is just who I am. The devil is a lie. You had too much spoken over you. You had a personal relationship with God. Don't you lay down and die. Don't you lay down and die. I don't care what. Don't you lay down and die. Take the medicine, eat it. I've been there, bro. I've made mistakes. Take the medicine, eat it. Get up. Get up. And you got to get up step by step. And you got to get up step by step. And you got to... Put your hand out, Mom. Put your hand out. No, no, no. Don't help me. Don't help me. I can do this on my own. I know enough about him to do this on my own. Put, 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 no, 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 no. Stop trying to, No, I'm good. I'm good. I know God for myself. I have my own relationship with God where I can get up and go to God for myself. I thank you. Thank you for the prayer when I was down there. I know enough about him now. I don't need you to pick me up when I'm up here. God expected me to walk and talk to him up here. Even if I have to limp, even if I have to slowly walk, I know enough about God, I can talk to God for myself. And that's where the victory is. I can talk to God for myself. Now you can stay in that position, you can continue to pray, but I'll walk for myself. 
I walk for myself. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need you hindering my progress by lifting me up here. I can do it. I can do it. God has picked me up. First of all, it's not you picking me up. I don't want that to become a strange God to me or to you. I don't want that to become a strange God to me or to you. It ain't you picking me up. It's God putting something in you to pray for me. But then I'll get up on my own. I know enough about God. And that's how you forge a relationship with God. That's how you forge a testimony and a relationship that can't nobody take nothing. They cannot take that away from you. Come here. I can use my phone. Come here. See, I can only do this so much. I can only do this so much. I can only lead you so much. I can only lead you so much. The man of God can only lead you so much. You know, we used to do this. <laughs> this boy, no, he's my heart. I, we used to do this when he was one year old. When he was one years old, when he was two years old, when he was three years old, we would walk to the park like this. When he was four years old, when he was five years old, we would walk to the park just like this. It used to be, those of you that are real close to me or knew me, back when he was less than two years old, if I walked out of the room, because we did this so much, we were close. We did this so much, and we still do it, but not like this. But we, if I walked out of the room, and tell me if I'm lying. If I walked out of the room, he would cry. If I just walked out of the room. He was like that all the way up to maybe what? One, two? If I walked out of the room, he would cry. Because he was so used to And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And he got so used to that. He got so he's so used to me praying for him for years. For years when he would uh when we get home and get ready to lay down, I pray for him. Uh, we get we uh, get at the foot of the bed. We go over scripture. I say like two or three scriptures to him, and then we will pray. And then I tell him I love him, and then he get in the bed. And it became such a pattern. And I'm going, I am going somewhere with this. It became such a pattern with him that if I didn't do it, Dad, I'm waiting. I would send him to bed like you know whatever time it was eight eight thirty. And if I didn't come up there, Dad, I'm waiting. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Whatever I'm doing, whether I'm eating, watching TV. Dad! I'm waiting! He's gotten so used to that. Even now, like, you know, he's as gifted as I No, he's more gifted than I was. He's more gifted than I was. He's got it from an academic standpoint. He's got it from an athletic standpoint. He's more gifted than I am. Way more. It just takes, it just takes nurturing. But he's so gifted that sometimes, just like in my life, and I've used my life as an experience to try to teach him, just like in my life, because in my life, see, when you're really gifted, when you're really gifted, you attract attention, negative and positive, mostly negative, because you got jealousy, you've got people that want to see you, they're trying to shoot you down, you, you attract a lot of attention. And if you haven't been nurtured, you don't know how to handle it. So that's why you have to listen. That's why you have to hearken and hear even the most simplest of instructions. But he's starting to run into that. So what he's gotten used to now is I'm always there. I've always got his back. Whether it's a, a crazy teacher. All of our kids have dealt with some teachers that are off. Whether it's a coach that are, you know, whatever. He's, he's used to me. And, you know, I won't, I, won't, I won't baby him, but he, he's used to me, you know, coming to his, you know, defense. If it's in order. If it's rocking or dumb. And then sometimes, even then, even sometimes where it could be like, uh, I'm, you know, there's just that dad in me. I want to come nurture. I'm going somewhere with this. But now, over time, he's 11 years old now. We don't... Uh, we don't do the, the thing where I pray with him as often. We do it sometimes, but I'm at a point now where he's old enough. Keep walking, Jack. He should be able to walk on his own. Now, I've set a parameter. Don't go, don't go that far. I know you're fast. Don't go that far. Come back. Now, I've set a parameter. Come back this way, Jack. I've set a parameter for him where he knows what my expectations are. He knows what I poured into him. He knows what he's supposed to do. 
and I'll walk a little bit further behind him, but I'm still expecting him to walk. I'm not expecting him to stop and be like, ah, like he was when he was one or two years old. He should be able to walk on his own now. Some of you are expecting the man of God to still have that one or two year old relationship with you. You're still expecting the man of God to do this. And you ain't one or two years old no more. So now, once you start aging in here, when I say aging, I'm not talking about, well, maybe it can be physical, but when you start spiritually maturing, he starts doing this. And the expectation is you're still walking. The expectation is you're still walking. Jackie, stop right there. I want you just to plop down like you're throwing a fit. Now, when you do that, when you do that, his reaction is different. See, if Kyrie does or Kari does it, okay. But if you do that, because your relationship, I never told you to do that based on who I was. I taught you to pray for yourself and to have your own relationship with God. I taught you how to hear and hearken. So, so hopefully you are hearing me. Hopefully you are hearing me all the time. Because if you're doing this now at age 11, whatever age 11 is in your spiritual life, if you're doing this at age 11, you ain't heard me. And the man of God is looking at it like, you're still doing that, but you're 11 years old. You're 11 years old. I'm not going to respond. So now my response to him, I go back to the line of scrimmage. My response to him is not the same as it was when he was Kari's age. My response to him is, Negro, you know better. And I'm going to walk up on him with some seed, and what I say is going to be hot and fast. Why? Because he's older, and it's not the same time that it was before. When he was a baby, he had a lot more time to get it together. But now that he's 11, he needs to hearken yes. to simple instruction quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And I try to set an example, or I try to set a, a, a principle and a standard where he should be able to do that. What am I saying? Thanks, Jack. What am I saying? The man of God, he, can, he, he sets an example. He, he feeds us word. So when we don't hearken, when we don't hear, when we don't, it's simple instruction. And, he, and, 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 and as you get older, in the spirit, spiritual, as you get older, the conversations get shorter and shorter and shorter. When you're young, spiritually, spiritually, I don't know why I'm on this, but when you're young spiritually, you might get a visiting a village in trip. You might get a bunch of village in trips. You might get village in ricks. Out back, old Chicago. Uh, what am I forgetting? Um, Bonefish. You might get those two hours at a time. You might get those two hours at a time. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Sunday morning. As you start getting some age, you're not getting that. He did that, and you got to put it in scope. So you can't make Bishop your strange God. You can't make the man of God your strange God. As you start getting older, that time might start getting like this. Pretty soon, as he's watched you, as he's reviewed how you played in the games spiritually, as, he, as he's reviewed how you fought and how you've matured spiritually, pretty soon, it gets down to one word text. You used to be able to get a full dialogue. Now you get one word. Two words. All caps. You know there's a difference between the all caps and then the regular writing. Sometimes you don't get a response at all. Right. Which means you, I, 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 you got so much time to get it together. Right, right. Because <laughs> by the time, if, if you don't get it together in that a lot of time with your 13 year old self, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it hard, hot, and heavy, and we ain't gonna talk about it afterwards. Right. Now, you may not believe this, but that's love. Amen. That's love. That's godly love. That's love. Because he could just keep babying you. See, anytime you keep babying, now you're worshiping that person. Now you don't want them to grow up. Now you don't want them to grow up. 
You don't want that person to grow up. You want to continue to be seen in a certain image where they have to all constantly reach for your breasts of comfort. Man, I got eerily quiet in here. You don't want to make that a strange God. I have... I had to look inside myself and research myself to make sure I wasn't getting like that. Because I had, that's a, to a point. I don't mind telling y'all about me, whatever, I don't care, what you gonna do? Sometimes you can make, hey Brian, come here. Actually stand right there, Brian, don't, don't go anywhere. Stand right there. Hold your feet. <laughs> Sometimes you can make a crutch out of being the person somebody has to call. I've made a crutch out of being big bro. In Lexi's case, I can make a crutch out of being dad, where they gotta call you. They gotta run what they're going through through you. You, you can make a crutch out of being that person to try to save and deliver somebody. Don't look at me like that, y'all. Y'all. You can make a crutch out of that. I made a crutch out of that. And what will happen is your attitude will start conforming to this crutch. Your attitude will start conforming to this crutch. And now you can't hear words correctly for yourself because you made a crutch out of who contacts you and who doesn't. Who reaches out to you and who doesn't. How often and how long they reach out to you and they don't. Am I making any sense? So you want to hearken. You want to be able to hear God for yourself. You want to come in here with the right attitude, be able to praise God, make a joyful noise. I didn't make none of the scriptures I thought I was going to read. You want to be able to make, you want to be able to hearken, have your own relationship with God, and always have yourself open to where God can insert you and use you as a beacon for that person to come to. Because when you talk to them, when you tell them something, and this is for those, these are, these are for my experienced saints that have a lot of souls that, that run to them, run to you. When you tell them something, you'll be just like Pastor Linda was last night and on Sunday. You'll be unafraid, you'll tell them the truth, and you won't care if it hurts their feelings. See, sometimes the humanity in us, because we didn't have that growing up, we didn't have that person to lean on, and that person, when you, oh God. I don't know why I went here. When you were growing up, you didn't have that person that could help you out of the situation you went through. You just had to go through it and weather it on your own. And that was hard and it was hurtful. Hard and hurtful. You remember crying. You remember feeling dejected, defeated. But you don't understand that all the while, God was making you. God was making you. That situation was making you. And it was developing you and forming you into the person that you are now. Now you are a beacon. Now you are an example. Now you are somebody that they can come to you and say, Moni, I need prayer. Moni, I need this. Moni, and you can do it. You can say it. But the flip side of that is you want to be careful because you don't want to be so loving that, well, I didn't have somebody supporting me when I was going through that, so I want to make sure that I'm supportive in a way that I never received. No. Sometimes you being supportive is a good swift kick in the butt. Sometimes you being supportive is letting them have it and keep moving. Because I'm not going to make a strange God out of you. I'm not going to make a strange God and start worshiping you. I'm not going to worship the fact that you have to call me. Because there's going to be some times I'm going to do you like Jesus. I'm going to say something hot where you have to get off the phone. Just like Jesus used to say something to thin out, turn around and thin out the crowd. I'm going to say something to make it to where you don't call me. So you go to God for yourself. So you go to God and find out how good he is for yourself. So that way you have a testimony. And I can't be held accountable from taking your testimony from you because you called me instead of dealing with the hot word that the man of God had for you. I really don't know how I got here. I was, that was nothing I had written down. <laughs> Sometimes we mess ourselves up trying to be more and it's so simplistic. Sometimes you pray for the person, you tell them what they need to hear, and you get out the way. You let God. You let God. You don't insert yourself when God is dealing with somebody. You don't insert yourself. You give them what God tells you, thus saith the Lord, you give them word, and then you back all the way out. All the way out. 
You don't want any of you in there. When they're, when they're fighting for themselves, they can think about the scripture you gave them, but they, you don't want them seeing your face while they're dealing with something. You want them seeing God's face. You want them hearing from God. You never want your voice. I don't, I'm, I'm just covering that because we can make it a God. I know what I'm talking about because I have. I remember being offended because I didn't get phone calls that I used, I was used to getting. Why? How come they didn't just ask me? I could No, 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 no. They need to face that on their own. They don't need you. You've done your part. You nurtured and helped or supported. You good. You out of this now. It's about them. And learning that helped me get my eye back on. Because you could spend so much time, parents, we could spend so much time focused on our child. We take our eye off of what God has for us. And we're wondering why God's not blessing. We're still in the same process and the same, we're doing everything the same. You know what I'm talking about, your process. I come, I'm here worshiping, I pay tithes and offering. I'm here, I mean, I'm, on, I'm on the altar, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, but why isn't God blessing? You might be in the way just in your response to how God's dealing with your kids. He don't want to pull you back out of the way. You ain't me. You ain't me. Stop trying to be me. When you understand how little you are in this thing, when you understand how little you are in this great big universe that I set up, then I can bless you because now you've humbled yourself. You've gotten so proud and thinking that everybody has to run everything through you. But when you humble yourself, now I can bless you. Now I can send somebody to you. Now I can tell somebody, now you don't think it's all about you. Now you truly are lifting me up so I can draw all men unto me. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know how I got there. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. The main thing is hearkening. I can, man, I, 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 I want to move on, but I'm like, the main thing is hearkening. The main thing is being able to hear God. Hear God for yourself. Right. Make yourself available. And sometimes that means humbling yourself. You can be too proud. You can think you know more. than. Sometimes God don't send people to you because you don't know what you think you know. You don't have the advice or the information that you think you do. Maybe you do, but the way you say it, they won't receive it. Right. You might know the exact same thing, but because of rapport, because of what, because of the twain you put on it, because of your other strange gods, or what, what and maybe, maybe it's not a strange god, maybe it's just you had a rough day, or maybe, maybe it's whatever you're dealing with, but the way you say it, they can't hear, they, they're getting too much of you and not enough God in the advice that you're giving. Too much of you, not enough of God. So sometimes the best alternative is cut that person off or God will just say something sharp to where well, I don't, I don't even want to call them now. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. When you get people that don't want to call because they know the standard that you stand at, that means you make that, that means you moving forward. That's progress. Here you are beating yourself up on not thinking that you made progress and you're not counting up the things that God has already done. See, that's another thing. You have to be able to remind yourself of the things that God has already done. There are victories that you have not celebrated. There are victories that you have not celebrated. Do you know how big of a deal it is? Hey, Keith, do you really understand the example and the man of God that you are? Do you really, really understand how, what kind of example that you set for a Daydreon? That there is no Daydreon if you, he didn't have the example that... Right. Right. Again, I'll be real honest. Daydreon couldn't have followed me and been in where he's at. He had to follow your example. Right. Couldn't have followed me. Now see, that don't seem like a big deal to you. That may not sound like a lot, but when you understand that God used you as something to, to launch, that you're the launching point for somebody else's ascension to their mandate, you understand how important you are to God. So then that gives you the window and the opportunity. Wait a minute. God, will you hear me like that? Now you can speak for yourself because Adrian is the man of God that he is because you were instrumental. So now you, you have to now open your mouth. You do a lot of you do a lot of praying for other people, but you don't do enough praying for yourself. You do a lot of praying for other people. You are the most loving dude. You're the coolest dude. You're always looking out for other people, but you don't look out enough for Keith Mills. You don't go to God for Keith Mills hard enough. 
I don't know why I'm saying this. I'm just being honest. I already told you, God. He, they, they couldn't have got where he was following me. It had to be you. It had to be you that God used. Now, you use that instrument. You take that thing. You lay that before God. See, you haven't been, you haven't been celebrating that. You have not celebrated that as a, as, as a mantle that you can hold up as a man of God. Like, God, I've been an example. I've been, you, have not, you have not been to, went to God that way. If you went to God that way and understood exactly who you are, not a piece of who you are, exactly who you are, God would immediately immediately hear you and immediately move and do what he asked you to do. How do you know? Because your wife immediately made your son wake up. Your wife immediately went in there and spoke. You got it already in your house. So now you have to activate it for you. Didn't plan on saying it, so whatever. I'm just being honest, bro. I'm, I'm, I, ain't trying to, I, ain't trying to, I ain't trying to be nothing. I'm telling you real. I didn't even want to stand up here today, so I'm just being honest. I don't know why I'm saying that. What part of my notes? But you have to celebrate. There are victories that you ain't celebrating. Star, there's not enough victories that you celebrated. You have been a beacon. Not a beacon, a beacon. You have not celebrated enough in what God has done for you and what you have been, what you have meant to the kingdom. You have not celebrated enough. Michelle, you have not celebrated enough. You can play six degrees of separation with the blessings of the Wilson household and Grace Apostolic. You can play six degrees of separation. Everywhere you look, there's a handprint on what the Wilson household has produced somewhere in the house of God. Whether it's Stephen and Ariel, whether it's what Skyler is doing, whether it's the effect that it's had on Lana, and now look at the example on the beacon that Lana is. Look at how she's flourishing. That can be attributed to the household of Tim and Michelle Wilson. Look at Simona. Look at Simona. Simona. She didn't follow me. She followed your husband and your example. <laughs> See, sometimes, you know what I'm talking about, Pastor KT? We really don't ante up. And speaking of not really anteing up, you have not, you have been, you refuse to rebuke me in that corner over there. You used to rebuke me for not doing my homework right. You used to rebuke me. Now you have watched just about all of us grow up. And you had, uh, you had a love affair of love affairs. You don't take enough, um, you don't look at how you are, how God sees you in enough of a life. You don't celebrate yourself. You don't celebrate the victories. You another one that will pray for everybody. We'll pray for everybody, but when it comes to you, when it comes to you, God don't see you like you see you. God sees you up here. If you say it, God moves on it. If you say it, God moves on it. That's why you pray every Sunday. That's the reason you pray every Holy Ghost explosion. If you say it, God moves on it. So, I'm just saying. You know, sometimes you gotta celebrate what you got. You'll mess around and go so silent, D, that you forget. Yay! I can't count how many sisters sing the joint example. I can't count how many well, young wives want to be like you, both physically and maturity wise. So at some point, that has to kick in and you gotta believe it. You gotta walk in that. D's already walking in it. You gotta walk in that. It ain't just half a household, it's a whole household. So you got to walk on who you are. If you say it, Danielle, if you say it, God will do it. But you got to believe it. You got to believe it. You got to for real believe it. You don't believe how great a woman of God. Raise your hand if Danielle felt has affected you. And you got men raising their hands too. That's who you are in Christ Jesus. We don't, that's who you are. That's who you are. So you can't sit there and let the enemy beat you up. We're not going to tell her back there and play with her. You're not going to sit there and let the enemy beat you up. We're not gonna let you, you're not going to let the enemy beat you up. You mean something in here. If you say it, God will do it. If you say it, God will do it. If you walk in who you are, God will represent it. Step to the plate and be that God. We got too many examples of great men and great women in here. If you look at all, man, all four of y'all are light years. Even with your mistakes, you're light years ahead of where I was because I wasn't married when I was your age. The mistakes you made financially and stuff, I made those as an older grown man. Y'all ahead of us, man. Y'all got to speak on that. Even with your mistakes, man, fuck that. I made mistakes in here. I made financial mistakes. I made emotional mistakes. Quit, man. You got to quit looking at that stuff. You got to get up and go. You got to get up and praise God. You got to... You gotta get up. 
You gotta get up. You can't want us to pick you up. You gotta get up. You gotta get up. And you don't worry about how we look at you. It's how you see you. It's how you see yourself. Don't worry about what you think you are. It's how you see yourself. Because I've been in the sanctuary and felt like everybody was looking at me crazy. Man, raise your hand if you felt that way. Man, get that out your mind. That's the enemy playing you. That's the enemy playing you. You gotta get up and go for yourself. It ain't even about echo at this point. It's I want to be saved. I want to be a man of God. It ain't even about her. It's not even about her. I have to be a man of God. I got to be able to look myself in the mirror. I don't, it's, it's not even about Coco. It ain't even about that. I want to be able to look myself in the mirror and be proud of what God has done. I want to be able to look and see that I've made some progress from that immature Negro that was a teenager when I walked in here. I gotta see it for myself. That's why I'm trying to hearken. That's why I'm hearken. That's why I'm trying to be in here at 7 o'clock. I gotta hear that for myself, God. I don't wanna enjoy that you're doing it for my brothers and sisters. And I will celebrate with them when I can celebrate myself. See, if you can't celebrate what God has done for you, it's really hard for you to celebrate what God is doing for the saints. It's really hard. It's gotta mean that much to you. It's got to mean that much to you or you will die for it. I would rather, man, you guys got to mean that much to you. When it means that much to you, then all of this makes sense. Your spirit. It'll mean something to you. You want it to mean something to you. Not because nobody else said it. Not because somebody's pumping you up. You want to know for you. For you. You want God to bless you for you, not because of what anybody else said to you, not because that's great, but all that should be, all we want that to be, all we want that to be is confirmation for what I've already been saying about myself, Taylor. I want that to be confirmation for what God has already, the conversation I'm having with God. That's all that man was trying to tell me up there in that corner. That's all he was trying to tell me. But now, now that I'm doing it, now that I'm kind of walking away, kind of walking on my own, you got something you can ask God for yourself. Now you got to do it even more. Because now that you're an example, you got to be an even bigger example. Because when the person that followed you starts walking in what you said, now you have a responsibility. i got to up the ante because I can't get sniped out being a harbinger to bring that soul up. I now have to step up my walk. I now got to have to go to a new level of praise. i got to have to go to a new level of faith. i got to go to a new level of speaking things. The, the astronomical, the phenomenal, the, the supernatural. i got to think and believe things and do stuff that I never wanted to do. Amen? Amen. 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 And that's all I got, man. <laughs> I didn't go over, I didn't, I don't know why I wrote anything down. I didn't go, I didn't touch like 90% of it. But so let's go to the altar. When you go to the altar, go to the altar for you. Don't go to the altar praying for somebody else. Go to the altar for you tonight. Go to the altar for yourself. It's what I want. Jackson is about my own relationship with God. Daddy and mommy can only take you so far. You've got to have your own relationship with God. 